السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا. من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, all praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gathered us here tonight to study the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all of us, accept all our deeds and guide us to the straight path all our life and make us steadfast in the last minutes of our life. Allahumma. Last week, I spoke about the virtues of Al-Mu'awwidat and Al-Mu'awwidatayn. I hope you still remember what's the meaning of Al-Mu'awwidat and Al-Mu'awwidatayn. No. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> so let us go a little bit deep this week, inshallah, to try to understand what about al istiada in itself? Whom we are seeking refuge from or with, and whom seeking refuge from, and what are the things that we ask we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from? So In the first ayah of Surah Al-Falaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ So here there is an order. And this order is to seek Allah's protection, the Lord of Al-Falaq, <coughs> and here we have to understand that this is the only way to seek protection. Because no one else can protect you from all the evils in this dunya, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned some of them or the majority of them in these two surahs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned those who used to seek protection by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He mentioned Surah Al-Jinn وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالٌ مِنَ الْإِنْسِ يَعُوذُونَ بِرِجَالٍ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَزَادُوهُمْ رَهَقًا And there used to be some from human beings or men from human beings seeking protection by men from the jinn What happened? زَادُوهُمْ رَهَقًا they made their situation worse. And in the tafsir, they said that the man in Jahiliya, when he used to travel and the night comes there, he will say, أعوذ بسيد هذا الوادي من شر سفهاء قومي I seek refuge with the master of this valley from the ignorant people of of his people, the ignorant persons of his people. Then he will go to sleep and 
he will feel that he is he is secure. So what they used to do made them rahaka. So they made them go beyond the boundaries, and actually it didn't benefit them as they used uh, to us. <laughs> now, when we say "A'udhu qul a'udhu bi Rabbil Falak min Sharri ma khalaq," so istighada here from the shar. What is shar? Ibn Qayyim rahmatullah alayhi he mentioned shar is anything painful, and this pain can be physically and can be spiritually and can be emotionally. So, if someone uh, passing by, then someone hit him, a car or by even a stone, this will cause him <coughs> what? Physical pain. Pain, physical pain. So this action is now, sure, someone he he's working in a company, make a mistake. Then maybe his boss on that day he had in a bad mood. Then he will notice that mistake. He start telling him off. For example, this is what now emotional pain. Emotional pain. And sometimes you are doing a mistake to do with salah, to do with disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you feel bad in your heart. What's this? Spiritual. Spiritual. So all of this, what we call it? Sharp. So anything hurts you, anything affects you badly, so we call this sharp. And all types of sharp is haram. So you are not allowed to harm anyone physically or spiritually or emotionally or any, anyway, even those who go to school, you'll find there is a policy for bullying. And I'm sure in the school they are talking to you about bullying and there is, uh, you know, all these things talking to you that even touching a person uh, in a bad way can consider be bullying, talking uh, giving people names, they consider it bullying. So, if they are calling it bullying these days in schools or uh, other institutes, we can, again, understand what we mean now by shah. So, everything harms you, this is shah. Now, shah, which comes to you, now, during the day, most of us, they are suffering from different types of sharp comes to you. This sharp, sometimes it is a sequence of sins you committed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishing you because of that. So you commit a sin, then you'll find after one hour maybe or one day, or one week sometimes, or maybe later, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishing you for that, for that sin in this dunya. And I am always saying, if you are a believer and this happened to you, this means that you're still so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even you committed a sin. Why? Because this means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes to purify you as soon as possible. To give you an opportunity to make tawbah. Because all of us, we agree that when you are in a bad situation, you become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you are in difficulty, you start to oh Allah, please. When you need a money that you don't have a lot of money and there is uh, like maybe last two weeks of you know, people going back to school, you have to buy stuff for your, your children. And you don't have the money, you start, oh Allah, please. 
you know, help me to face this. If you are in other type of difficulty, you will find yourself become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I remember Ibn Qayyim rahmatullah he said, not, not, uh, he's not talking about the punishment, about something else. He said sometimes the, the trial came because it's been a long time you didn't repent or a long time you didn't sit and shed tears so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put you in this trial to make you closer to him subhanahu wa ta'ala so it become rahmah and one of the salaf rahmahullah said I can understand my position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or my relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the attitude of my wife and also with my horse. So, if on that day I woke up in the morning and I found my wife start nagging, arguing, this means uh, I've done something wrong. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this wife now nagging. Or he, he, he might go to the horse and this horse usually goes smoothly you ride it without problem, then the horse starts jumping up and down and or the minute he on the top of the horse, the horse goes up and put him, put him down. So this is, might be, uh, again, a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I remember I read <clears throat> in a, a very beautiful book called Adab Deen, Adab Deen with Dunya, and in that book he mentioned a very short story. He said one of the Salaf, he was at home. And the people, they know that he is a righteous person. Then a person knocked the door. And that person who knocked the door, he was well known in the area that he is a very bad person. Very bad. So when he knocked the door, this righteous person came out and that bad person starts swearing at him. Calling him names. Saying to him, come to fight, I'd like to do this to you or this. And all this suddenly, without any, anything happened, he didn't do anything. So he said to him, wait, wait. He went, entered to the house, went there for five, ten minutes, then he came, and that one still angry. So when he came out, he said to him, while he's still angry, why are you being there all this time? He said to him, I want to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sent you to me to punish me because there is something I did and I don't know about it. So I went to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he considered all this swearing and bad language he used as a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, it is a time for me to go to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first type of sharp because of sins, the rule, you committed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, part of his rahmah, like to purify you from these sins in this dunya. Because as I said, when you are in difficulties, when you are suffering, you find yourself closer, praying more, reading the Quran more, making dua more, and, and so on. And sometimes the shark comes from another person or another creature and this creature as they say there is mukallaf or ghayr mukallaf mukallaf like human human being or a jinn ghayr mukallaf like the insects uh, snakes the animals 
and these things, viruses, bacteria, all, all of these things. So these two surahs <coughs> are talking about all the types of shah. If it is because of you or because of others, if they are mukallaf creatures like is jinn, humans, jinn, or non mukallaf creatures like, uh, as I said, animals or uh, these days we said bacteria, viruses, all these. So Surah Al Falaq has four types of shar that we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from. The first shar is the shar, shar al makhluqat the shar of all creatures. The second shar, shar al ghasiq idha waqaf, when the night comes and covers the, the day. The third shar, shar al nafathati fil uqad, those which crafts or magicians or sorcerers who are doing sihr against the people. The fourth shar, Sharr al-Hasid idha hasad, the inv, the inver when he envies. And one of the things of the Sharr brothers that doesn't matter how the people look at the, at the Sharr or evaluate it, it's still Sharr. For example, the people who drinks, do they enjoy it? The people who drink alcohol, do they enjoy, enjoy it or not? They enjoy it. But in fact, it is what? Shab. The people who are committing zina, at that minute when they do it, they enjoy it. But it is sharp. So the sharp sometimes, it might not be painful at that minute. But what's painful, now what's painful in this case would be, what it will lead to. So, someone committing zina, the minute of zina he is enjoying, but after that, it might, if he didn't do tawbah in this dunya, it might take him to the hellfire. Or if he be caught, then he will be lashes or stoned to death. So, shar it might be at the minute when you commit it, it seems to you that it is a good thing, but the results of it, it will be shar. So the shar doesn't matter how you look at it. If it is shar in itself, it's still shar, even if it looks sometimes sometimes good. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to make all the time isti'ala. And we know, for example, that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he finished the hiyat and Allah salat ala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or what they call it, durood, he used to say, Allah mani a'udhu bika, min adhab al-qabr, min adhab من عذاب الجهنم من عذاب القبر وفتنة المحيا والممات والشر فتنة المسيح الدجال. So these four things the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم used to say it all the time. And some of the scholars they said to say this is wajib. Even Ibn Hazm رحمه الله he considered if you if you ignore these this dua deliberately your salah invalid. We are we don't go to that extreme. But we say that it is for your benefit to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this regard and every time to seek Allah's protection from Adab Jahannam, Adab Al-Qabr, so the punishment in Jahannam, the punishment of the grave, Fitnat al al the trial in this life and uh, the time of death, and Fitnat al-Masih in the jail, the trial of uh, Antichrist or Messiah in the jail. And the Nabi Sallallahu also used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhika min al-hamm wal-hazal wal-ajzi wal-kasal 
والبخل والجبن وضلع الدين وضلع الدين وغلبة الرجال so and when you look at these four uh, eight things you'll find every two links together so الهم sadness الحزن again it is another type of sadness or sorrow so الهم when you think about bad things which might to happen this is ham الحزن when you are unhappy or sad because something already happened so here you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from all the sadness that it happened or the sadness it might come and العجز والكسل when you are incapable of doing something and if you are lazy so when you are incapable so that something you cannot do it so you have no uh, you cannot do it by, by your, yourself and the castle when you are lazy so this is from yourself so even you are unable to do something because of something beyond your uh, abilities or something you are able to do it but you are so lazy to do it and the jubn al bukhl jubn to be coward al bukhl to be miser or to be stingy and we'll find the things together so most of the time the coward person is a miser person generally because because he's so afraid from his money or for his money this doesn't want to to spend any uh, any of it and the one who's not able to give any any penny from his uh, his wealth he will not sacrifice himself his his soul so you will find the jubil well bukhl coward and miser goes goes together then nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said dal'ain wa ghalabat ar-rijal dal'ain when you are in debt and you cannot pay it back and dal'a rijal when the people overcome you or harm you and you'll find this also these two things goes together because sometimes when you are in debt you cannot pay the people they take you to the court and uh, in some countries if you sign a check and uh, it bars they, they send you to the to the prison or maybe you're in trouble with, with these people it, it depends on who is the people you owe them money or sometimes they seal all your properties send you to here what they call them bail off Huh? Well, so they come, look at the door, take everything in the house if you cannot help me. So this is now Qahr. Yani Qahr Rijal, when they overcome you, you can't do, uh, do nothing. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi used to seek Allah's protection from uh, all of these things. And one of the things that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi used to seek uh, protection, Al-Ma'tham wal maghrab الماثم والمغرب الماثم which is anything cause you to commit a sin إثم المغرب when you are in debt so the Sahaba asked the Prophet صلى oh Prophet of Allah we noticed that you keep asking from الماثم والمغرب he said when the person in debt then and he cannot pay back the people what will happen he start to lie and this line becomes now ethem. So you'll find that two things goes uh, together. And the Nabi Sallallahu used to say, أعوذ برضاك من سخطك وبمعافاتك من عقوبتك. There is, this is one of the dua in the, in the sujood. اللهم إني أعوذ برضاك من سخطك وبمعافاتك من عقوبتك وأعوذ بك منك لا أحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك. Oh Allah, I seek your fruit, uh, a refuge with your rida, with your pleasant, that you are pleased with me from your anger and be for uh, forgiving me or pardoning me from the punishment. So he is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to save him uh, uh, of all these things. 
Now, brothers and sisters, the shar that you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from, it might be exist, so you'd like it to finish, or it doesn't exist, so you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep it in this situation. So it is either now you see it, you're suffering from it, or something might happen, it doesn't exist now, and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to happen. And one of the du'as at the end of Surah uh, Al Imran is talking about all these times. He said about the believers, they are saying, Rabbana innana sami'na munadiya yunadi lil iman. An aminu bi rabbikum fa amanna. Rabbana faqir lana dhubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabit aqdamana wa nsurna ala qawmi. So Allah, we heard a caller calling for Iman to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, forgive us our sins. Oh Allah, relieve us from all our sins. So now you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to relieve you, to forgive you, to relieve you from something exist now, which is, you see it. All of us, we know that, all of us, we are human beings, we are committing sin. And you ask, ask, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something you'd like to happen, which is to offer them al abra. When you take our life, take it with those abra, with those righteous people. Then you ask about something else. Oh Allah, uh, give us what you promised through your prophets, which is something good, but it doesn't exist now because it was a promise and we cannot see it now. You, oh Allah, you told us about this and we'd like it to happen. Which is something we don't want to happen. Doesn't exist now. And we don't want this to happen. So Allah, don't humiliate us on the day of, of, of judgment. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, asked him to teach him a dua. He taught him a very beautiful dua which talks about all types of sharp and how it works and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from it. He said to him, إِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ وَإِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ In the morning and the evening say, اللَّهُمَ فَاطِرَ السَّمَاوَةُ الْأَرْضِ عالم الغيب والشهادة رب كل شيء ومليك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أعوذ بك من شر نفسي وشر الشيطان والشرك وأن أختلف سوءا على نفسي أو أجره إلى نفسي. So Allah, the Creator of the heavens and the air, the one who knows the unseen and all those exist. The Lord of everything and the controller of it. Controller. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. I witness, I bear witness that there is no God but you. I seek your protection from the sharr 